Welcome to Applied Mathematical Finance. So in today's session, um, I like to discuss the evaluation of the Quanto Caplet. And this is actually an interesting session because uh, you learn even a little bit more about the change of Numerea technique, the choice of the Numerea. And later uh, we will then move to convexity adjustments and define something like the natural payoff unit of an, of an index. And I like these two sessions uh, because um, you really see what is Gesanov theorem uh, for a nice tool for us. And you don't see that so much if you start with equity derivatives, yeah, Black Schultz model, a stock, because there the numeria is deterministic. You move it in front of the expectation and you do not see these issues, yeah, which are correlations that that can can pop up. So we will see this today. And actually, I believe that maybe this is um, a point why one should start discussing um, yeah, financial mathematics with interest rates anyway, yeah, because your numerea is an interest rate product. Yeah, maybe it's not so good to, to first see Black Shorts model. Yeah, let's let's start. So my section is valuation of a quanto caplet. So now the thing is here that we look at the quanto. We did the valuation of the caplet and the foreign caplet already. Foreign caplet was in our last session. So maybe let's um, shortly repeat this. The caplet is just paying here the forward rate for the period here from T1 to T2 at the end of the period in T2. There it was not mentioned that there's a specific currency. It is my domestic currency. So this guy here is in my domestic currency. The nice thing is that if you choose now the bond that matures at the payment time, then this guy is a martingale under the corresponding um, equivalent martingale measure. If you choose the bond that matures at the payment time as numeria. The foreign caplet is paying the foreign interest rate. So now maybe here in dark green, it's the foreign interest rate at the end of the period. So, but since I am the domestic investor, so that's the important part, I am the domestic investor, the payment for me has to be converted to my currency. Yeah, he pays it to me, so it pays in my currency. So there is an additional thing here. There is the conversion with the, yeah, say, currency exchange rate here. And we looked at this, and it looks a little bit more complicated because there are two, two stochastic quantities. Yeah? So this guy here is fixed in T1 in the future. So this is a stochastic, this is a random variable. And this guy here is fixed at the payment time. So this is a random variable. So we have two random variables here. It looks as if we have to model two objects. The quanto caplet is simpler since I just have a single stochastic quantity. So it also pays you the foreign interest rate. <clears throat> but this interest rate is immediately applied to a domestic notional, a domestic quantity. Yeah? So I pay you 5% interest if I observe a foreign interest rate that is 5% on a domestic amount. And you see that because here the currency exchange rate is just exchanging the units and the units of say here my my m yeah m is in foreign currency yeah so m is something that is in foreign currency and we pay that at the end of the period yeah so we pay it here in t2 <clears throat> looks simpler since there's just a single stochastic quantity we have just replaced the currency exchange rate with a constant we already valued the foreign caplet. <laughs> and what we obtained was 
if we assume that the foreign interest rate follows here a log normal model. So there is here our, our log normal model, a Black Scholes like model, log normal dynamics. Uh, so the diffusion part is a sigma L tilde dw. Then I just get Black Scholes formula for the caplet here, where the foreign valuation, uh, so this is here the our nice generalized Black Scholes formula foreign forward rate multiplied with d plus minus the strike multiplied with d minus yeah, multiplied with the foreign zero cover point. So that's the value of the foreign currency caplet. And then I just convert this value, which I could call here V tilde at zero. So the value that the foreign investor would see to my currency. Okay, so to get something in my my unit. So I just hop to the foreign market, I value there, and then I transform the value. Uh, in our derivation, yeah, we could also choose a corresponding numeraire and convert all the payments and take the expectation, and that worked quite well. So what's now happening here to the quanto? So to recall, this here is the payoff profile of a quanto caplet. And the big thing is that we pay a foreign unit. So here, all my foreign units are now marked with a tilde. A foreign interest rate, I apply it to just a domestic currency and just consider here that we use unit currency. So if you take here one unit of foreign currency. I just immediately convert it to a unit domestic currency. So I multiply this here to my domestic currency. Okay, is the strike rate. I would like to value this. Let's assume a model. Yeah. So I have to assume a model because it is a nonlinear payoff. Yeah? So maybe we have to assume a model. Let's start like we, we worked for the foreign caplet. We assume a model for L tilde. So my model is just a Black Schultz like model. So it is a log normal dynamic. So I have here for the diffusion, a sigma L, uh, sigma L tilde times L tilde dw3. So I have a three here because later I maybe need other uh, Brownian drivers, other risk factors yeah, for other model components. And it's a three because maybe you consider domestic the one, the currency exchange rate, the number two, and the foreign the number three. No? So that's why I use here the three. Let's see what we will need to value this, this financial product. So that's the starting point. I just start with the same model as for the foreign caplet. No? So where we would arrive at the Black Scholes like formula for the foreign caplet. Next step is what is the choice of the numeraire? Okay, so if we choose, so what did we do for the foreign caplet? We could choose the foreign bond that pays at the end of the period. So that's actually this guy here. And if I, you choose this guy as a numeraire, then L tilde is a martingale. Well, but that guy here is a financial product on the foreign market. So what I have to do is I have to choose the foreign bond that pays at the end of the period converted to my currency. That was the guy that we choose as numeraire for the foreign caplet, because we saw a nice little surprise that L tilde is also a martingale under that numeraire. So it is a martingale for me as the domestic investor, because this year is now the numeraire that I can choose as a domestic investor. Okay, and why do you see this? It's just because that the L tilde, which is by definition, the ratio of the foreign 
zero copper bond at the beginning of the period minus the one at the end of the period divided by the one at the end of the period. So this ratio here, somehow the performance yeah, of this zero copper bond over this period divided by the period length. Okay, then you could just multiply on top and on the at the bottom with the FX. And you see on the bottom, I have now my nice numeraire. And on the top, I have, yeah, I multiply both here with that. I have a portfolio of traded assets. Okay, so I have a portfolio, a traded portfolio, and I have my numeraire. So that is a martingale under the corresponding martingale measure. So that guy here is a good candidate for a numeraire. So why is it a good candidate for a numeraire? Because if I move to this guy, I know that this part here is zero because now under that measure, it is zero. So I now know the dynamic under this measure. It's just DL tilde is sigma L tilde times L tilde times DW3. I can integrate this yeah, and I know analytically the distribution of L. Huh? So it's log normal. So if I take the expectation, then maybe there is hope, yeah, because I know the distribution, maybe there's hope that I can calculate the under expectation almost analytically, yeah, expect that there's no, except that there's no closed form solution yeah, for the capital phi of D plus minus, but they are accurate functions to approximate this. So as a small remark, I already mentioned that L tilde is a martingale under the numeraire P tilde of T2, yeah, the bond that matures at the end of the period, but now the foreign bond. So you could have thought that you could choose the numeraire P tilde, but note that this is not a numeraire because it is not a traded asset for us. So it is a numeraire for the foreign investor. So the foreign investor sees that this guy is a martingale under the measure where he chooses the zero copper bond that matures at the end of the period. So that is all here under the foreign in inside the foreign market. But what we have to do is we have to choose a traded asset in my domestic currency, yeah, so in my domestic currency, and that would be the foreign Cooper bond converted to my domestic currency. You cannot expect that L tilde is a martingale under the domestic zero Cooper bond that matures at the end of the period. Yeah? So these two guys here, are different, yeah? So this guy here, the domestic zero copper bond that matures at the end of the period, paying in my domestic currency, is of course a different asset compared to the foreign zero copper bond paying at the end of the period converted to my currency. So you have to be a little bit careful to uh, not confuse the change of numeraire with the change of market. Huh? So the reason why I observe here a martingale and here a martingale is that I take the foreign numeraire and make the foreign numeraire a domestic numeraire. Huh? So I just convert the foreign numeraire to my domestic common numeraire. And that does not change the process because I just multiply here on top and on the bottom. Okay, so that's a subtle thing. Yeah, You, you have to be sure that you are observing from your market objects that you buy on your market, yeah? So change of numeraire and change of market yeah, uh, should not be confused. 
So why is this important for here for our product? Well, the problem is that if you go back to the payoff, you see what I pay is one unit of domestic currency. So what I pay is the zero copper bond that matures at the end of the period observed at the end of the period. So this financial product pays the interest rate in this unit. So going back to this slide, I would like to choose maybe this guy here as a numeraire because that's the unit in which I pay. But I cannot expect that the L tilde is a martingale under this. So I do not know L tilde under this measure. Okay, so summary, yeah? So since the payoff profile of the quantum caplet is that the foreign unit is converted here to the domestic unit with a constant and not with the fx. I would like to choose pt2 as my numeraire, yeah? because that's exactly the guy that is paid here. So if I would choose this guy as a numeraire, then it would be nice because then I pay L tilde. Yeah, okay, so that's right. Maximum of L tilde minus K and zero. Yeah, I pay this in units of this numeraire. And I can divide with my numeraire. So such that, okay, this is now nice. In the expectation, the numeraire cancels. Okay, so this means that if I choose the PT2 bond, my domestic zero copper bond as numeraire, then this numeraire will not show up in the expectation. Yeah, so we used this trick when we derived the Black Scholz model for the caplet. Okay, and also for the foreign caplet, there was an FX times foreign bond on the top, and we choose that as numeraire on the bottom, so it was cancelling. So from the payoff, this guy here is the natural choice of numeraire because we pay in this unit. And you see that now the expectation operator only has the L, and I can plug in the distribution of the L and calculate the expectation. But now I, I'm in trouble under this numeraire. I do not know the stochastic process. I know it under the other numeraire where it is a martingale. Okay, this guy is not a numeraire, but I know it under the P tilde Fx. So somehow I have two yeah, favorite numeraires. So the first one was the foreign zero copper bond converted to my domestic currency. So that one was giving me this dynamic here, the martingale. And the second one is the domestic zero copper bond paying at the end of the period, which is motivated from the payment unit, the units in which I pay, but under this, I do not know the stochastic process. So somehow I need a change of numeraire. Yeah? Either way. So you could value your expectation under the nice numeraire where the numeraire is canceling. So that is this guy. Then I need a change of numeraire to get the stochastic process because I only know the stochastic process under that guy. Or you could choose this guy here as a numeraire, but then you see that the bond here divided by this numeraire is not canceling. So I need something for this inside the expectation. So in other words, we need some kind of change of numeraire coming here from the foreign bond converted to domestic currency to 
the domestic bond, the one that is the payment unit of this financial product. So that is then a change of measure, a change of measure here from the QP tilde FX to the QP. So the ratio of the two numerators is the change of numeraria. Yeah? So you can think now of the right and we could the derivative yeah, a little bit. Okay, there should be also the initial value involved. So what I consider here is PET tilde FX divided by PT. So I take the numeraria under which my stochastic process is a martingale and I divide by the numeraria which I would like to use maybe in the expectation because it cancels the numeraria in the expectation. This object here has a name. This is called the forward FX rate. Yeah, so here I call it FFX. Uh, it depends on the parameter T, yeah, the maturity of these zero copper bonds, which are then later associated with the payment time T2 of my quantum caplet. It's a stochastic process, yeah. So I observe all quantities here at the same time. So observation time here is my little t. I observe the zero copper bond, foreign, domestic, and the currency exchange rate in little t. Yeah, what is this object here? Okay, first observation, this object is a QPT martingale, right? This is a QPT martingale. So my L tilde is a martingale under that guy. This guy is a martingale under the numeraria which I like to have in my on my expectation operator. Well, this guy has a nice interpretation. Let's have that in a remark. So the forward FX rate, this is a relative price of two domestic traded assets. The foreign bond converted to my currency, it has units domestic currency. The domestic bond, it has unit domestic currency. So it's a relative price and it is unit less. So it's one domestic divided by one domestic, and it is a QPT martingale. The object has a nice interpretation. This is the amount K that you have to pay in capital T. So capital T is here my maturity. Okay. The amount K that I have to pay in my domestic currency to receive one unit of foreign currency. So I would like to receive one unit of foreign currency. So if I would like to have one unit of foreign currency, the price is K times one domestic. But it's the price if I make this contract in little t. Yeah? So I fix this today. So I ask the bank, okay, what do you like to give me the foreign currency in the future? Uh, what do you like to have also in the future? So everything is fixed in little t here. But the cash flows, they flow in capital T. So if I would like to fix this price today, uh, the whole transaction here should be zero, yeah? So the value of paying K times one domestic in the future should be equal to the value of receiving one unit of foreign in the future. So what are the values? Yeah, the values are just K times the domestic zero copper bond for K times one unit domestic currency in the future and the foreign zero copper bond for one unit of foreign currency in the future. Okay, so this here is a value in foreign currency. I have to convert it to my currency. So let's convert this here to my currency by multiplying with the FX. And this is the FX that I observe in little t today. Yeah. Okay. So in order to have this being equal to zero, I have that the foreign bond 
converted to my currency should be equal to k times the domestic bond. Okay, so divide by the domestic bond. And you have that the k is the foreign bond converted to domestic currency divided by the domestic bond. So that's my k. So you see the fx forward is just here this, this, this k, the price that you have to pay in the future for this foreign currency if you contract it today. Hence also the name. So this is a martingale and I need it. It is the change of numeraire. It is the thing that allows me to move now from one numeraire to the other numeraire. It is the missing link. And I need a model for this guy. So assume now for my FX forward, a log normal dynamic. Yeah, so it's also a Black Scholes model. I already know that this guy is a martingale. So I choose here my numeraire PT2. So th this is the nice numeraire that cancels the numeraire in the expectation operator. So let's move to uh, P2, uh, PT2 as my numeraire. So then I know that this guy is already um, a martingale. So I have that the FFX is some sigma, uh, let's call it sigma FFX times FFX because I assume a log normal model times a DW could be a different DW. So let's call it DW2. Okay, that's the model for the missing link, the link between the two markets, the link between the two numerias. Okay, so how do I get now my L tilde, my process L tilde? So I do not know L tilde under that numeria. But if you multiply now the L tilde with this change of numeric quantity, you observe that this product, so L tilde times FFX, this is a martingale under that measure QPT2. Yeah? Because why is that? Okay, first you plug in L tilde. So that's the zero cover bond at the beginning of the period minus the one at the end of the period divided by the one at the end of the period divided by the period length. You multiply with the forward FX rate. Okay, so you could now multiply here everything on top with an FX, everything on the bottom with the FX. Yeah it's still the L tilde, yeah, like we did before. And then you see that the P T tilde FX here cancels. So you move to the other numeraire. Yeah, or here, yeah, I just cancel this guy here and you see that you multiply everything on the top with the FX and you now have that this is the Foreign zero copper bond at the beginning of the period converted to your domestic currency. So it's a traded asset minus the foreign zero copper bond at the end of the period converted to your domestic currency, another traded asset. So a portfolio of traded assets, domestic traded assets, yeah, portfolio of foreign bonds converted to your currency divided by this other numeraire. Yeah. So this guy is a QPT2 martingale. Yeah. So you know that the drift of this guy is zero. Okay, so uh, yeah, what is our aim? Yeah. Where are we heading? Going back to this slide, I've now chosen the numeraire here such that it will cancel in the payoff. And I am under the numeraire where I do not know the stochastic process for L tilde, especially I do not know here this guy. Yeah? I do not know the drift because I do not know that it's, it's a martingale. Yeah? So what I would like to know is the distribution of L. Yeah? So the expectation operator is clean. The only thing inside is the L tilde. What I would like to know is the 
distribution of L tilde. So I like to know this guy here. So I like to know the stochastic process under QPT2. I know FFX under this measure. And I also know now the process here for the product is also a martingale. So I have two stochastic processes that are here you know, connected, FFX and L tilde times FFX, where I know it is a zero DT plus something. So I can now use Ito's lemma on this guy. And if I use Ito's lemma on this guy, the mu P tilde will appear inside my equations and I can solve for this mu. So I can now find out the mu. We know the full dynamic of this stochastic process L tilde times FFX. And we know the stochastic process FFX. So both are martingales. So from that, we can get our L tilde using Ito's lemma. So best way to work this out is use Ito's lemma here on this guy yeah, and then compare coefficients. Yeah? On the left-hand side, you have a zero dt plus something. On the right-hand side, you will have something in front of a dt where our missing mu, the guy that we would like to know, will pop up. Okay, Ito's lemma applied to this product. Yeah, it's the product rule. So it gives me uh, dl tilde times ffx and l tilde times dffx and the second order term, the dl tilde dffx. So here in this dl tilde, there is my missing mu. So that's a log normal process. So it is an l tilde mu dt plus L tilde sigma dw. Okay, there is the guy. This guy is a martingale. So it will just give me an FFx sigma FFx dw, uh, the dw2. And my second order term gives me now, okay, so it will be just the dw dw part, yeah, dw dt is zero. So I just get L tilde sigma L tilde dw3 multiplied with ffx sigma ffx dw2. So now I assume an additional modeling part. What is the dw2 multiplied with the dw3? If these are two independent Brownian motion, it would be zero. If these are the same Brownian motions, it would be a dt. So dw2, dw3 would be a dt. There could be a correlation. So let's assume that we have dw2 multiplied with dw3 is a rho dt. And the row could even depend on time. So there is a correlation parameter. So I have here a row of t that I assume as an instantaneous, yeah, the correlation in the infinitesimal moment here, uh, correlation. So that means this part here, this part here becomes, okay, it becomes ffx times L tilde. Then it is the sigma ffx sigma L tilde, dw dw, the rho dt. All these guys, because it is log normal processes, yeah, they have um, an ffx times L in front. Yeah? Every guy has that here. So I can move that here in front. And what I do get inside is the mu part hmm, coming from here and the rho ff rho sigma ffx sigma l tilde hmm, coming 
from here in front of my DT. And then I also have some DW parts, which I do not care about because what I have on the left-hand side is that I know that this guy here is equal to a zero DT plus some diffusion. So I can now compare coefficients and I know that this has to be zero. Okay, so the mu must compensate for this covariance term. This is a covariance term, yeah? It's a correlation rho times sigma FFx times sigma L. It's the covariance of the FFx and the L tilde, instantaneous covariance. The mu is compensating for this, so I know my drift. So now we know the mu, and I know now the stochastic process for my foreign interest rate under the numerea, which is the domestic zero copper bond. So if I observe this foreign interest rate here under this measure, yeah, okay, it is drifting. Yeah, now we know the stochastic process for the L tilde. It has this drift part. Okay, so it's a log normal process. If you now move to log L tilde, yeah, actually you get a stochastic process where the L tilde here is removed, yeah, the L tilde in front is removed, and you get a minus one half sigma squared from e to lemma, yeah, dt, um, because you move to the logarithm. So you see that moving to the logarithm, my drift is the drift that I would have under the classic Black Schwartz model, but now I also have here the drift part, yeah, which, which comes from my covariance term, my minus sigma FFX, sigma L tilde rho. If you integrate this, you get the integral over this drift. So I get in addition to what we had for the foreign caplet, I get this little integral. But now, yeah, you can just move that here into the Initial value, yeah, we move to the logarithm. Initial value of the stochastic process log L tilde is log L tilde of zero. You can just move that inside there. And you see that you have to adjust the initial value with a factor e to the integral minus rho sigma f of x sigma L tilde dt. Yeah? Integrated from zero to yeah, capital T, which is then the fixing time of my L tilde, yeah, the exercise of the option, which would be the T1. So you see, now I know the distribution and I can plug this into Black Schultz formula, but you can just argue very quickly that it will give you the same Black Schultz formula with just a modified L tilde of zero. Okay, so everything that comes now after this here is the same, and it's just the L tilde, the initial value of this foreign interest rate is modified with this adjustment factor here, which is called the quantum um, adjustment. So paying not in the um, natural unit will lead now to a Black Schultz formula yeah, that looks very much the same, but has a slight adjustment, a slight shift in this initial value, which comes from this this drift. Okay, so all together we get a Black Schultz formula, an adjusted Black Schultz formula, where we adjust the initial value with this factor here, the exponential of the integrated covariance, the quantum adjustment. Okay, so that was a nice little example where you see that, okay, this became a bit more complicated. And yeah, by the way, uh, you see the value of the financial product of the option is different. Yeah? And the value is different if there is a correlation here between the currency exchange rate and the interest rate. Yeah, and we can dig a little bit deeper and analyze this maybe at a later session or when we have some numerical tools, we can look a little bit what's going on. But this is 
the price that you pay for not having the conversion with this currency exchange rate. So for example, if you observe that the interest rate in some other country are much higher, yeah? say for example, there's a country where you observe 8% interest rate, um, borrowing money in your country and investing that in that country doesn't give you anything because the foreign currency exchange rate will kill this um, yeah, this difference. Yeah? Later, we can look at the FX process and you see that it's exactly drifting at the difference of the two interest rates. If you then go to the bank and say, okay, I do not want to have the foreign currency exchange rate inside this product. Yeah, I just want the foreign interest rate applied to my uh, currency. Yeah, okay, then they will charge a different price and the price is exactly adjusted by what they expect that you have in this drift. That happens if you have uh, some correlation be between the FX rate and the foreign currency. If there's no correlation, then the currency exchange rate doesn't kill so much from the payment because when interest rates are high, yeah, then okay, currency exchange rate is maybe high or low, yeah, doesn't matter, yeah, in expectation that is maybe not relevant when interest rates are low, also the other guy is high or low. So if there's no correlation in expectation, it doesn't kill you. But the problem is whenever the foreign interest rate goes up, the currency exchange rate goes, for example, down, yeah, then um, it will kill, you, uh, kill your profits. So you see why the correlation comes into play. So that was it for the quantum.